For a termination, make the required marks on the cable and using a hacksaw, score the wire armors, but please do not cut all the way through. Remove the outer jacket and any binding tapes, being very careful that the wires don't spring and cut yourself. Take a few wires and, and bend backwards and forwards until they break. Continue with the other wires. Remove the inner bedding, being very careful not to damage the cores or their screens below. If you're using a knife, be very careful not to either cut yourself or again to damage the cores or the insulation below. Always cut away from yourself. It's sometimes easier to use side cutters to remove the filler cores. This helps prevent any damage to the conductors themselves. It may be advisable to use a band of PVC tape or something similar at the end of the cores to prevent the tape screens from unwrapping. Mark the screens where they need to be removed. Use a constant force spring or something similar over the mark previously made. Use the spring to tear off the copper tape screens. Try not to use a knife, but if you do, ensure that you do not damage the insulation below. Use a round file to give a circumferential cut.
cut around the individual cores. The use of a rolled spring will act as a guide. Using a depth knife, score the length of the conductor, ensuring that the knife does not penetrate through the core screen and damage the insulation below. With a pair of long nose pliers, pull back the strippable semiconductive screen. Check to make sure there is no damage to the insulation below. If there is, you may need to, to abrade out any surface damage using aluminium oxide papers. Repeat this process on all three cores. Using cleaning tissue, clean each core individually, starting from the top and working towards the cable screen. Slightly warm each individual core to ensure that all of the solvent has evaporated. Using constant force springs, attach the earth braids to each of the individual copper tape screens. Apply a band of red sealing mastic on the inner cable sheath under and over the individual tinned copper earth wires. Use a band of black sealing mastic over the jacket removal point to act as a seal. Slide over the cable breakout. Ensuring it is well down into the crutch of the cable. And starting from the mould line, shrink the body of the breakout in place. Once fully recovered, shrink down the individual breakout fingers.
apply stress control mastic over the screen cut area extending 10 millimeters onto the core insulation and if necessary catching the copper tape screens. Position the stress control tubes and starting from the bottom and moving upwards, shrink in place. These tubes should be smooth and wrinkle free when completed. Fit the cable lugs and then apply red mastic over the lug barrel extending 20 millimeters onto the core insulation. Repeat on all three. Use short pieces of red mastic to wrap around the breakout fingers. By leaving the backing paper in place prevents the mastics from sticking together. Carefully slide over the three anti-tracking tubes, remembering to remove the release paper. Make sure they are firmly over the breakout fingers. Starting from the bottom and working upwards, shrink the three anti-tracking tubes in place. Once finished, these should be smooth and wrinkle free. Remove any excess tubing once the tube has started to cool. Position the cable gland and using the hose clamps provided, connect the steel wire armors to the body of the gland. Cut off any excess braid that's present. Ensure there are no sharp edges from the hose clamps to damage the outer tubing. With the black mastic strips provided, cover all sharp points. Making sure the hose clamp is completely covered.
Locate the outer sealing sleeve and starting from the centre and moving upward, shrink in place. Once the top part is completely recovered, shrink the part over the cable outer jacket. When completed, this tube should be free of any wrinkles and smooth to the touch.